right, so welcome back to the efficiency of the heat engine. We're now going to take you through the actual data collection process. Um, on the screen right here is what the thermodynamic cycle is going to look like once it gets completed. And I didn't mention it earlier, but we need to get the integral of that area right there. And that total integral will give us the network done by the, by the heat engine, the network that it did in lifting, lifting that mass and then returning itself to its original state. So we got it set up on the top for doing an integral. We did that before in the impulse momentum theorem lab where you measured force by time and you integrated over that, that function. Well, this here will take the integral uh, inside that rectangular area right there and that will represent the total work and then you're going to do the theoretical calculations and see how close you come to getting that value right there. You'll also be calculating the efficiency of the work and uh, the efficiency of the heat engine by finding that network that was done and dividing it by the total amount of, of heat that came into the system from the hot reservoir. Okay? So uh, the, the system's all set up. I'm going to take this can right here and the weights. I'm going to put the weight while it's at the low temperature reservoir. I'm going to put the weight on the stand after turning on the computer and that will be isothermal process. The volume will go down, the pressure will go up, uh, but the temperature will not change. Then I'm going to transfer, transfer this over to the hot reservoir and then it will lift it up at isobaric conditions, meaning the pressure will not change. The inside pressure equals the outside pressure until it reaches its highest point. Once it reaches the highest point, we're up here at this corner right here. Then I'm going to take the weight out and then it's going to want to expand. It's going to, uh, since the weight isn't on there anymore, uh, we're down in this corner right here when I take the weight off. Then I'm going to transfer it back to the coal reservoir and it'll return it back to the original point way over there on the left. All right, so, so here we go. We're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and we'll, we'll run it through its, through its cycle. Two, three, go. All right, so we're going to put that on there. It's compressing the gas. And then I'm going to transfer this over to here. And I got a nice handle on there. Okay, once it gets to the end, getting close, you can see it's still flatlining. That's all isobaric right there. And then I'm going to pull the weight out. Looks like it can pull the weight out now. Then it's okay, good. And then I'm going to put it back into the coal reservoir. And you want to make sure uh, it, it closes right up and so you get a complete integral without any holes. Ooh, I got a little, oh my gosh. Hang on one second. Okay. Got it. Anyway, you can see the integral right there. There's a little bit of some openness over here. You can see there's some pink right here, so that would have to be eliminated from the data when you transfer it over to Excel. It's making your integral a little bit bigger uh, than it should be. But that's, that's the process right there. So it gives you the integral value, and this is your thermodynamic cycle. So one more time, this was isothermal, coal reservoir, putting the mass on the stand, isobaric, this is where the heat's coming in right here. So we transferred it to the hot water, and then we took the mass over here, so this isothermal down to this point here, you see the volume is increasing, the pressure is going down. And then we transfer it back to the cold reservoir, and when it does that, uh, I'm sorry, the, the volume increased as the pressure went down. And then isobaric all the way back to the beginning. The volume's decreasing, and the temperature is decreasing because it's going back into this coal reservoir uh, right here. 
And so that's it. That's, that's the whole process of measuring a thermodynamic cycle. So you'll soon get the data, and on lab day, we'll do a little Zoom, and we'll talk to you face-to-face, -face and uh, be sure you're there. We're going to take attendance. That's going to be part of your participation. You need to be present for the lab uh, in order to get those participation points. You'll also be working with your lab group uh, via one for, uh, for Microsoft or Google Docs. It's good if you learn one, though, because one is written by Microsoft and is uh, much more efficient in keeping the formatting all together. Is there anything you want to add, Mr. Sylvester? No, sir. It's my arms are getting tired. Okay. <laughs> so we'll see you later, and thanks for, for watching.